India has a lot of space missions lined up for 2023, which will have a lot of first, with India sending humans back to space to plan or to plans of opening its own space station. We on Stack correspondent Ankit Tuteja speaks to Awais Ahmed, the founder and CEO of Pixel. Hi, I have with me Awais Ahmed, who's going to talk about how the space sector around the world is shaping up. Welcome to Beyond Awais. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks. My first question is, private companies around the world have launched a new space race. How do you see it? So I think it's a good thing. The earlier space race in the last century and the last few decades has been with government trying to uh, uh, put up technologies that would cement their uh, uh, self-reliant status. But the new space race is more exciting because it's about exploring the space and, and adding more and more technologies out there. So it's the private sector now that's taking the lead, whether that's SpaceX um, in the US or whether that's companies in Europe now and uh, with the burgeoning new space sector here in India. It's more and more satellites that can help us understand our world better. It's more and more rockets that can send more of these satellites that can help us understand this better. It's, it's more missions um, where private industries are sending lunar uh, rovers and landers to the moon to understand uh, the celestial bodies in the solar system better. So I think um, that way it shaping up well, but also space will increasingly become a significant geopolitical um, arena in the, in the years to come and um, um, you know private companies will play an important part there so it's it's a sector that is, has increasing importance and uh, exciting that private companies can get to play a part in that you know india has a few space missions uh, scheduled for 2023 so how excited should we be and why very excited. Um, there are going to be a lot of firsts that are going to be happening, not only for the country, but for the for the continent. Uh, India is planning on sending humans back again into space after um, Rakesh Sharma went up uh, quite a few decades ago from, from Russia. Uh, and then, you know, I heard Kalpana Chawla and uh, uh, others go up as NASA candidates from America. But now finally, we will have Indian astronauts going from Indian soil on Indian rockets, uh, which is going to be a, a entirely new, excite, uh, exciting era. Uh, and also not that uh, we have plans of our own space station which will open up a whole new area of uh, uh, a laboratory where you can do experiments that can help us understand uh, materials better that can help us strengthen industries on ground so i think you know just looking at the human space flight program as well as the space stations um, some of the first firsts to come in the indian space sector where uh, you know we all get to participate and be a part of this would be very exciting you know, we can see the privatization of space sector around the world. Even in India, we can uh, see uh, the Indian government moving in that direction. Uh, what do you think uh, about this move and how it's going to benefit uh, the private players? So I think it's, it was something that was long pending. Any serious space, com space country you see around the globe, such as the US, France, Germany, UK, already had a, a large number of private enterprises that were working end-to-end -end on these services, especially the US and, and for the past few decades. What that has allowed was that freed up the budget that was coming in for these space agencies to actually focus on cutting edge work. Um, you know, when you look at the amounts of billions of dollars spent into space, you don't really think, you know, why, why don't we spend that on, on, you know, poverty or things like that. But when you look at GPS, right, that pervades all of our lives today. We can't really go uh, a few days without having GPS in our phones and that's been enabled by space technology. Uh, things like that that really end up uh, doing that. So that opens up the budget for private, uh, uh, end up for the space agencies to then take up and work on those cutting edge work, leaving the commercialization part of the private entities. That way, there's now a burgeoning economy where the economy and the GDP itself grows thanks to private companies, but at the same time, um, the, the tax money for the space agencies can be used for these cutting edge work. The private space companies in India, they've entered the space race, but how far can they go? Uh, all the way, I would say all the way to, to being the self-reliant and uh, being as big as SpaceX. There's no reason why it can't happen in 10 to 15 years. Of course, it'll take time. We're still in the very early stages. Uh, the privatization only happened in 2020. Uh, lots of companies only started in 2017, 2018. We ourselves started in 2019 at Pixel. Um, so there's a long, long way to go in terms of still getting to a point where revenues can keep generate, keep sustaining these companies. Right now, uh, the Indian private companies are at a point where technologies are being tested out. Uh, we at Pixel tested out the India's first private satellite Chakuntala in April this year. Uh, Skyroot launched the first suborbital rocket uh, just a couple of weeks ago and then we launched one more satellite last week. So we are at that point where now Indian companies have the expertise to actually put hardware in space and show that we can build this and something can work in space but then taking that to the next level where customers around the globe can start paying for that and using that to sustain yourselves will be the next step. So I would say we can go all the way to competing head to head with the global behemoths but that will take uh, 10 years. And where do you see India in the space tourism race? 
I think we should focus right now on more uh, utilitarian <laughs> stuff such as Earth observation, communication, space stations uh, and not focus on space tourism because that's something that honestly uh, um, you know is for folks that have money to spend and want to go to space but not really advancing the technology itself or advancing the, um, uh, the space ecosystem around the globe. So I would say that's it's a good thing that it's not being focused right now here in the country. Uh, we should first focus on things that will give us utility and benefit and then of course it, the, the space tourism part will, will emerge on its own in, in a few years or decades. And coming to the last question, how will the space privatization affect the Indian economy? Um, it will it'll grow it, of course. I think, look, the, the, one of, some of the biggest companies in the United States uh, are in the space sector. Um, uh, and some of the biggest companies in, in Europe are in the space sector, aerospace sector. Um, and th there exists no similar companies of that size um, and stage here uh, in the country. Um, so privatizing, essentially, as I said earlier, the opens up the budget for ISRO to do what it wants to do in terms of cutting edge work, whereas uh, more and more space companies come up and start to interact with each other and start selling services. It just grows the entire pie of the economy. Uh, so uh, excited to see how the economy grows with, with space leading the way for the next few years. Thank you so much for such valuable insights. It was great to have you on Beyond. Thank you so Thank much. You. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.